Um, we're gonna try this. This is a new thing. And <laughs> can you can you cut from right after she said? Okay, Bree, just say the next thing. <laughs> This, I'm quiet. <laughs> Another clap. <laughs> no clap. <laughs> Touchdown. Let's <laughs> <been> come back. Let's <laughs> clap tears. <laughs> you can't work like this. <laughs> <laughs> the sickle fritz. Look at me. <clears throat> Adam has a case of the Sniggle Fits. Heck yeah. He started. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Did everyone hate Jimmy Fallon? <laughs> Is this what I'm learning? Welcome to this week's episode of The Pitch. The Pitch. We are back for season two. I'm Bree. And I'm Adam. You can follow me at, at Bree Windham 22 And at Get Your Hands Up. And you can always follow both of us at The Pitch Beham. What have we got this week, Bree? This week, we've interviewed Morgan Copes, one of the owners of the Birmingham Hammers, the okay. local professional team here in town. You can follow them on Facebook. You can also check out their website for future events. Check out their calendar for games, tryouts, more information, anything Birmingham Hammers related. They also have some sweet, sweet merch. Awesome. So one of my favorite things about what we're talking about today is we are discussing how do you create a professional team. Oh. So <clears throat> the Birmingham Hammers are in the NASL League. So one of the things that I talked to Morgan about is how do you go from an idea to being in a pro league and then are there any aspirations to go to MLS? And one of the things that he talked about is that there's no soccer specific stadium in Birmingham. So we couldn't even fit that role. But what's interesting is we have sort of a local, I guess like how Birmingham has that like one spot that's like a big Falcons fan for Atlanta. That's going to be how we're going to be with Atlanta FC. Okay. Yeah. So of I've seen it is. some tryouts for Atlanta FC. Mm -hmm. It's looking good. I'm excited. Um, you know, especially if, if they follow that same route as the other expansion leagues like Orlando, right, like right. Uh, <clears throat> New York City Football mm -hmm. Club. I think it's going to be really interesting to watch, especially when. They're going to be the only southeastern team, um, if you don't really think of Orlando as right. southeastern. Yeah. Um, so it'll be like the first southern soccer team, which I think is really cool. It's very cool. Um, and so it's possible that one day there could be this link between the Hammers and yeah. Atlanta. Yeah. And <clears throat> we could have one of those great... Minor league system sort of thing. And one of the really cool things about the Hammers that I don't think people really understand unless they go out to a lot of games is that... We have international players, people right, that absolutely. have had actual international caps for mm -hmm. their country in our pro league. Uh, and a lot of them are coming from UAB. So if you want to see them, you can see them at UAB in the fall. And then you can come watch them in the Hammers uh, with other local players in the spring. Awesome. Uh, they play out at Sickard Hollow mm -hmm. Complex. Really nice complex. It. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Right um, France Mill Road. There is a... Magic City Brigade, which is the fan club, sort of like American Outlaws is to the United States teams. Um, and they do a tailgate before, and even some American Outlaw people will do tailgates yeah, before Yeah, they too. know what they're doing, so, so definitely worth checking out. It's definitely a dose of soccer culture. If Absolutely. you want to get just like a night of immersion in soccer <laughs> culture, <laughs> Absolutely. they have the scarves, they have chants, they have songs. Um, there's definitely, you're going to have a favorite player. Um, and it's really cool. There's like a lot of Birmingham pride. One of the things I noticed in Oklahoma City with having the thunder mm -hmm. there when I lived there mm -hmm. is there is a lot of tension between Oklahoma State University and University of Oklahoma, just like Auburn and of Alabama. Course, yeah. Not as big, of right, course, right. but it's similar. Yeah. And what's great is that 
in the spring, everyone just sort of becomes a Thunder fan. That's really cool. So I think that's a really cool thing is that you can go to a Birmingham Hammers game. No one's really, uh, it's cool to be with friends and, and no one's like, oh, they're, they're an Alabama fan. Oh, you that's can't right. say this, you can't say that. You know, whatever. These are Hammers fans. That's right. For one night, you're co-humans. Um, I, you can even buy a flex pass, which I did last year, um, due to my schedule, I was only able to go to one or two games, but I was able to give my friends the card, they could use the tickets, so nice. you can That's buy really about cool. 10 games up front that you can use however you want to use, there's a lot of options, um, so cool. definitely check out the Hammers website, check them out on Facebook, mm -hmm. so you can have tryout information, one mm -hmm. of the things that Morgan talks about at the end of the interview is that if you are looking to try out, it's very attainable, but you want to be one of those people that shows up, they're fit, they're ready. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be the person that's gassed at the end of it. Right. So, um... Nobody wants to be that person. No. So, it's a very attainable goal, uh, and tryouts, I'm assuming, will be closer to the spring. Right. Probably sometime in mid-fall. So, if you want to do this, this is your chance. You have time. You can be ready. Um, you know, or even this time next year, mm -hmm. be in a professional team in your hometown. So definitely check out the Hammers, stay updated, and support your local soccer. Yep. Morgan, I have a few questions for you. Um, how did you and the other owners of the Birmingham Hammers start a professional team? So it was really just kind of um, – Something I kind of started out with Lou. John Terry and I went to college together, uh, and we were sitting at one of the local breweries and, um, and just kind of catching up a little bit. We've known each other for a very long time, and, and, and so we just kind of looked him in the eye across the, across the table and said, Hey, do you think this is something we could do? And he was like, Yeah, of course, I think we could do it. Um, you know, it kind of started from there, and, and we got a little bit of encouraging from, uh, um, you know, from the from the crowd that was around us, I guess it wasn't really a crowd, but it was more of a people that were passing by who would say, hey, would you support something like this in Birmingham? You know, we got a little bit more encouragement and um, kind of the process started from there and we started selling scarves and then t-shirts and we ran a couple of events and then, you know, lo and behold, we ran an exhibition season last summer in 2015 and then here we are now, um, you know, just after our first season in uh, the NPSL. How does it go from an idea, like, I imagine there's a ton of paperwork, but how do you go from the idea to having an official professional entity in and of itself in this town? Sure. I mean, it, the paperwork really wasn't that bad. It was more so the getting the awareness out and the scheduling and finding the coaching staff and the players and um, you know, the logistics of the travel. Um, yeah, that was, that was more... Uh, what we were looking at. Um, so how did you, once you became the Hammers, how did you look to fill that staff of coaches and managers and players? Sure. So, I mean, you know, our head coach was uh, Joe Person. Um, and he and I had a relationship back when I was playing at the University of Mobile. Uh, he, was a, he was a coach on the, the women's side, and he left town, but, you know, he... Um, had a good reputation down there and always did a good job and so you know, uh, reached out to him and saw uh, that he was interested and so he wanted to get this started with us and be a part of this and, and so we did that and as far as the players go, we ran an open trial a couple of years and uh, you know, so it was, it was kind of fun to see that, uh, see people come out and you know, uh, you know, show up in, in you know, hundreds. I mean, we had 100 the first year, we had about 75 the next year. Um, it was just surprising to see how many people actually came, and um, you know, we didn't we didn't expect that many, but we were obviously thrilled that we did have that many. Do you think if Birmingham knew the process of getting the team, and how long did it take for you guys to go from the idea to having a team? How long? Uh, in 2013, we started the the idea. It was kind of hatched. Um, and in 2015 was our first year, so um, actually playing. So really, kind of two years, and then three years to get into the league. So, gotcha. So, do you think if people understood that it was a journey to even get a team, that they would maybe support it in larger droves? Have you have you noticed that you have a large following? 
Yeah, I mean, of course, we've noticed, um, you know, we've got a, a really large following, and it's fun to see, you know, the people who are purchasing our merchandise off our website, um, you know, shipping it to Washington and to Seattle uh, in, you know, um, you know, Washington, D.C. area, um, and, you know, Seattle over in Washington State. And, you know, we ship stuff as far as Hawaii, and then stuff, we ship stuff overseas as well. Um, so it's kind of fun to see all across the southeast, it's just people who are from Birmingham who have heard about it and, um, you know, want to want to follow us and want to be a part of it and want to support. And, you know, so it's, it's been really um, amazing to see that. How do you guys picture getting a larger crowd? I've been to the games, and it is a large crowd. But to, to see, I mean, you guys are obviously – on a model for growth, do you guys see yourself going to a league like the MLS in the future? Oh gosh, I mean that's that's so far down the road. You know, um, you know, there's no there's no stadium for us uh, for an MLS team right now. Um, Is that the requirements for? Do you know the requirements to have an MLS team? I, uh, yeah, I mean one of them is a soccer specific stadium. You know, unless you can get an exception from the league, and then obviously the capital benefit. Um, or the capital piece of it, you know, and we're nowhere near having it. We don't have the capital um, sure. to bring a team. I think, you know, franchises are going for $200 million right now. So um, you know, I check my couch in my car and a few few quarters and pennies shy and then probably <laughs> five or six zeros shy of having the money to do that. Sure. So how do you see the Birmingham Hammers fitting into this national NPSL scene? Um, you know, I, I see it growing and continuing to – you know, attract more people and attract more fans and, um, you know, kind of grow as the city is growing. I mean, people are starting to hear more and more about us, which is great. Um, you know, we have a, a phenomenal family atmosphere um, at our facility in Liberty Park. Um, you know, it's, it's really great. Um, you know, for that, you can really get right up close to uh, the action. Um, How can and, we find out more about the Birmingham Hammers? Yeah, I mean, following us on, on Twitter, Facebook, and you know, Instagram is really the best way. We also, Our website is also a good place to, to see some information, some updates, and, you know, visit our online store. Um, you know, it's just BirminghamHammers.com, and then, you know, you can just type in a search field of any of the social media platforms you use. Um, just type our name in there, and you'll, you'll find us as well. All right, and, of course, talking about soccer culture, I've got to ask you the burning question. Um, do you guys have any specific cheers that you're pumped up about? Any specific players we should watch out for? Uh, what's some information you can get us to give us to get hyped up about the next Birmingham Hammers event that comes around? Sure. So you know, our season just finished, so the majority of our guys, you know, are back at school playing, and you know, some of them are around town. So um, you know, as far as the next big event. Um, we don't have anything scheduled right now, but we'll probably have something in between now and the end of the year um, to kind of, you know, promote ourselves and to draw a little bit more attention. Um, you know, so uh, it'll be interesting to see how all the guys do back at school um, as they play and, you know, prepare for their seasons and get those going. It's, it's always fun to see the guys who are playing for us during the summer play, you know, during college. And, and your players aren't just from Birmingham. Uh you have sort of a global presence when you look at your team. You've got some international players with you. Uh, what are some of the countries represented on the Birmingham Hammers? Oh, gosh, England, Scotland. Um, we had a uh, gentleman or a player from France this year. Uh, we had a couple of Germans. Um, you know, and, of course, you, know, you go to um, you know, all across the state, uh, people from all across the state. Uh, so for those of us just learning about the hammer give it a quick profile breakdown. So it's the Birmingham Hammers. Uh, and what's the motto for the Birmingham Hammers? Hammers to our And what is, what is the sort of chant? Or is there a chant for you guys yet? Uh, I mean, you know, our, our supporters group, the Magic City Brigade, kind of has, um, you know, a bunch of different ones. Um, and they like to sing in our games and such and, uh, you know, I think probably my favorite is uh, for the tune of You Are My Sunshine. You, know, you Are My Hammers, My Own Hammers. You may be happy when skies are gray. You'll never know how much I love you. Please don't take my hammers away. Uh, it's probably one of my favorites. Um, Have you had a game that sticks out where the audience was just over-the-top incredible? Any sort of memory that sort of gives you chills to think about? Um, you know, 
the, the, the game against Chattanooga, our first game in the MPSL this year, was incredible. They brought a ton of fans down and um, created a wonderful atmosphere. And I think we had 1,500 people show up that day. Um, the guys played really well. Fortunately, we didn't get a result, but you know, to lose 1 0 to a team who's been in the national semifinal probably the last six or seven years in a row and then the national final the last four out of seven years, that's saying something. And you know, we represented ourselves very well that night. How do you see this team going forward immediately within the next season? What are some of the goals that you guys are trying to accomplish just in a broad stroke? Um, you know, some goals we're trying to accomplish it, you know, from the from the front office front office standpoint is, you know, we're just trying to uh make sure we can improve on uh the game the atmosphere and you know, the tailgate and um, you know, some of the promotions we do during the game, um, or during halftime, you know, uh are some things that we wanna do. So we're getting some feedback from our fans right now. We're doing a, a survey to kinda of get their opinions and see what they thought and um, you know, go from there. So those are the biggest things we're focusing on right now. Um, I know. Well, thank you so much for talking with us today. Thanks for being on the pitch, Birmingham. Uh, we're always trying to bring the most uh, accessible ways to access soccer culture to the Birmingham area. So if you could just tell us really quickly, how did you get into the soccer world and soccer culture? Where did it start for you, and how did you get to the point of deciding to be an owner? Yeah, I mean, soccer has been a part of my life since I was probably you know, two and a half, three years old when I was born to watch my older sister play indoor. Um, and I continued playing club and uh, you know, all the way through middle school and through high school and um, you know, played at the University of Mobile for, for five years. And, um, you know, Got several coaching badges and did some coaching while I was in the off season, and, and you know it's, it's always been something that's a part of me. And when I moved up here and uh, you know, realized that Birmingham didn't have anything to go support or go do, you know, it kind of, um, you know, kind of really stood out, and it was just one of those things that kind of happened. It, um, it had to happen because just Birmingham has a great soccer culture, you know, through. Being around the American Outlaws, watching the United States play, and um, for the men or for the women, you know, they draw great crowds, and it's always fun to be around, and um, you know, being in an atmosphere where everybody's, you know, rooting for the same team. Uh, you know, so it's it's just one of those things we we've become a part of the, the soccer culture here in Birmingham, and we're so thrilled to be a part of it, and um, we just hope that you know we continue to um, you know represent the city well and represent our fans well, and um, you know, give. Uh, Give everyone a, a good a good show, um, and, and really find a way to enjoy themselves and enjoy some time with their friends and just plug in. There. And lastly, just some last bits of advice. If you could give any advice to someone who's been thinking about trying out for the Hammers and they've been too shy or they're not sure if it's such an attainable goal, uh, could you talk to those people for a minute who are sort of on the fence about trying out? Uh, they don't know if they have what it takes. How can you find out? What can you do to find out? Um, you know, we haven't announced the tryouts for uh, for 2017, 2017 season yet. However, you know, the biggest thing is you, know, you don't want to show up and not be fit. You don't want to be able to, uh, you don't want to be the guy hanging on the fence after 10 minutes, you know, uh, getting sick or, um, you know, cramping up or being dehydrated and, you know, just being prepared and uh, you know, treating it as if, um, it's something you really want to be a part of, and you're going to really take the time to take care of yourself, um, you know, so you can help your teammates and help your organization, and um, you know, get wins and um, you know, spread our word. Awesome. Well, thank you, Morgan, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Um, and we will hopefully get to talk to you again on the pitch. Awesome. Sounds good. Thanks so much for having me. So that was it. That was our interview with Morgan, and I hope you guys take the initiative to check them out. It's really important, I think, to support your local club. Uh, that's one really easy way of growing the game, to take all this hype. Um, U.S. soccer regularly reports that more and more kids are playing soccer, more and more people are going into this system. Um, to see that outcome happen in your in your local town where you can provide a place for people to try out and be a professional soccer player here is really fantastic. But they can't do that without crowds, without fans. Uh, so check it out. 
look at their schedule for the spring. Try and find a couple games you can go to. Support your team. It's your hometown team. So thanks for sticking with us, and we'll see you next week here on The, the Pitch. Pitch. Maybe we should just do this one all audio. <laughs>